Welcome to How to Retail. I'm Ryan Edwards. Today we're at Morningside in Auckland. We're at Body FX and we're about to meet the owner and operator Yolanda. Let's go and meet her now. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Yolanda and I'm the owner of Body FX, which is New Zealand's premier face and body paint and special effects makeup store here in Auckland. I detect that accent isn't entirely local. How long have you been in New Zealand? Okay, well, that's correct. I came from the Netherlands uh, when I was about 19, so I've been here for about 21 years now. So, and uh, our company's been going for 20 now this year, so been going for a while. Is Body FX a family business? It's, uh, yeah, it certainly was. Um, back in the Netherlands, body painting was quite a popular thing to do back back in the 90s. So my mum got into it and she dragged me along as her model initially and then we started doing some competitions um, and I went like oh well it's kind of nice to be on the other side of the brush being quite a creative person myself. Um, so yeah we started uh, body painting and doing special effects makeup in the Netherlands and uh, yeah and we brought that whole kind of thing to New Zealand and when we arrived there was really nothing here like face painting was like a little blobby heart with some two dollar shop paint on cheeks and um, we definitely felt like there was a need for education and uh, better products in the end really. So you've been in business 20 years, tell me about the business setup. Ah, so initially when we all started off, we started off with a, a little makeup studio in Wellington um, where we uh, taught courses uh, and we did a lot of services where we did face painting and body painting for our events and things um, and on the long side for teaching courses we brought in products from mainly from the Netherlands uh, because we need the products that we like to work with so we started selling a little bit on the side um, and that kind of grew. Um, then my husband's job changed and we ended up coming to Auckland and um, Auckland had a bigger market for event management things so I did a lot more body painting also I was competing a lot um, in body paint world so I did a lot of uh, world championships and traveled quite a bit so I got a bit of a reputation in the body painting industry um, so yeah I did a lot of more surface um, service based kind of things um, yeah but meanwhile still kind of teaching workshops bringing in more product and it's kind of organically been growing and then um, my sister moved up to Auckland and we decided like wouldn't it be great to have like a candy shop for face painters and um, then we had a look on trade me and then we found this place and then three days later we signed the lease for this place so we just jumped right into it um, and uh, yeah that was 10 years ago so that's uh, it's been kind of going pretty pretty steady and uh, we've kind of become quite a household name within the industry and for makeup artists. What do you think the point of difference is for body effects? Um, so yes, so the point of difference I feel is that it's very much a company from artists for artists so we understand the products and we know how to you know how to use it and therefore we can provide excellent service in that and further everything that we do is kind of happening in house so we my sister is a uh, graphic designer so um, we manufacture a lot of our own products as well here in Auckland so we, we have quite a quick turnaround on new products that we can come up with um, and then market it and make it look good by using our art skills as well so we kind of can create the full package within our company in a very fast pace. Thinking about the last 18 months, what's changed for the business? It's been definitely very challenging over the last 18 months. Um, when the first lockdowns happened, it was very quite scary because it really felt like, okay, well, we might have to let go of our staff, we might have to close down our shop. Uh, we don't, it was very, you know, very insecure times. Um, luckily, we came out quite all right. Um, people still kept shopping online and even more so, so that really helped. And then October came around, which is our Halloween month, which is normally a really good month for us. Uh, last year, everybody felt like to have a spooky party. So um, yeah, we did, yeah, it was the best month ever. So uh, we, we came out good in the end. Speaking of staff, who makes up Body FX? So we have about seven people, seven ladies all together. Um, so we have um, three full-time in our production facility and then we have two full-time here in the shop and then we have two part-timers um, as well for graphic design work and also shop work. So, um, And we're kind of constantly looking for more people at the moment because it's 
it feels like we're growing. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about Medic FX? Um, yeah, so Medic FX is uh, basically like a sister company created by my mother. Um, she, start, she started talking in Wellington with somebody who's working at a hospital. Um, and they were in a hospital, so they do a lot of simulation training for their surgeons and their nurses. And they work with mannequins that generally always look like a white male. And they were like, oh, can we turn her into a female? Can you maybe create a face to go on top of this mannequin? And so she did that um, and they loved it. And then she went like, oh, and then asked if, can you maybe do some wounds and stuff? So she ended up making more wounds. So this was all silicon work. Um, silicon is used in film and TV quite a lot. So therefore we had a lot of knowledge and experience already working with this product. And so she started doing all these things um, and that kind of grew with interest here in New Zealand. So we started working with Auckland University and Auckland Hospital. Uh, got a contract with them to create some uh, bigger, bigger mannequin pieces. And then we went like, oh, we might actually have something here. And so we went to a trade show in Australia, um, got a distributor there, and it's kind of been slowly growing as well. So now at the moment, we've got um, distributors in Europe and in Taiwan and China, Hong Kong, um, Australia. Yeah, like lots, lots of different places. So um, this is a whole new beast, really, um, that is very, rapidly growing um, and comes with a lot of challenges. Tell us about those challenges. So coming from an artistic background, referring to yourself as mainly as an artist, I kind of now have to become, uh, you know, a supply chain operator and a freight forwarder. And um, yeah, so there's a lot more things I have to do in a way that I have no knowledge of. So there's a lot of learning, uh, working with distributors in foreign countries, um, dealing with the different time zones, um, and then, yeah, you need sending, shipping things. It's all quite a daunting beast. And then also ma making sure we get all the products in and getting our raw products into our studio so we can actually make the stuff. So, there, you know, it just becomes a whole big manufacturing kind of problem in a way. How do you balance your time between Medic FX and Body FX? Balancing both sides of the business is very challenging because um, there is so much to do and owning your own business like there's never you're never done there's always more that you can do and in this case it's like having now two you know successful companies it's like trying to find time for both and then also trying to find time to still you know feed my artistic self which can be yeah it's a, it's a challenge but you know you can do 14 hour days it's okay you know with business expansion, with market expansion going into overseas markets, how have you learned all you needed to know? Okay, well, I'm definitely not there yet. I have a lot more to learn and I'm learning on a daily basis. Um, so I did, we did uh, attract a business mentor who comes in once a month. So he kind of just functions as a sounding board, but it really does help to have somebody there to, that already has done certain things so you can get you know, can push some ideas to them. Um, I also go to EMA, like um, part of their uh, program, accelerator program, where I can go to some of their conventions, so uh, where you can listen to other people how they have done it. It's pretty much this, this is how you learn, I guess. So you just find out from other people how they have done certain things and then kind of go like, okay, well, maybe I should try it this way and that way. And um, dealing with different countries uh, when exporting uh, products it comes with its challenges where for instance the UK might want to distribute their products in this kind of way but then China wants to do it this way and you know um, Denmark might want to use their freight forwarding company and you know Australia wants us to send it with normal post so everybody has their own little requirements and so trying to um, be great for everybody, it's quite, you know, it becomes quite a spreadsheet, you know? So um, we also figured out that because we have a um, business to consumer website um, that does not work for distributors. So right now we have a company helping us sort out a good B2B website um, that will integrate with Zero and freighting companies and then miraculously it's all gonna happen, hopefully. <laughs> So Yolanda, tell us about your e-commerce strategy. Where are things at now? 
and where are you headed in the future? Um, so yeah, so for our e-commerce strategy at the moment, we're very much focused on our email marketing. Um, over the last year when we really started to use email marketing, we've made it made a huge difference in sales. So we decided, okay, well, people are okay with emails, but it does well for us. Um, the main thing that we're now focusing on is that we target or that we have quite a varied customer base. So we have like face painting mums, we have um, kids that are into special effects, we have drag queens, but then we also have professionals that use our makeups for film and TV. So they don't need the same emails and they don't need to have the same information. So we're trying to funnel them into more their, their direct kind of email marketing so they get the right information for the right products that are actually relevant to them. So that's, that's our main aim and I think that will make a huge difference as well. So, Speaking of customers, how do you use social media to keep people engaged? So yeah, so social media is very important for us um, as we are very visual. So it, we're, we're a very fun company to find on Instagram and on TikTok. Um, so yeah, just kind of knowing where our customers are and how they would like to have their information. So on Instagram, we're very much about um, showing off cool stuff, our, our cool uh, makeups, uh, but also really promoting our customers. So we have an app on our web store where people kind of um, present their looks that they've created with our products so we can feed that back onto Instagram so we're kind of celebrating our customers through that. Um, on TikTok we're very much about education so very quick like how to do a butterfly in one minute so finding you know so we're kind of finding what people find interesting in certain places. Um, there are restrictions though like for instance for our special effects like you can't put special effects kind of things on any social media because it's too triggering to show bruises or cuts even if they are not real so we therefore we have to kind of find a, a roundabout on that so that's where our email marketing will come in and um, and kind of more make it more of like teaser kind of things like hey you want to learn more about special effects kind of click the link and then they can get the information separately but yeah, you can't unfortunately promote that on any other platforms with all the goodwill and momentum you built during COVID were you able to convert that into sales? Um, I don't know if we could really allocate specific sales really directly to that kind of goodwill, but um, it did feel like people didn't forget about us. So when once we got out of lockdown, when we were able to trade, um, it picked up real quick again. Of course, with certain things like the, the pantry effects, we collected people's emails because they had to download stuff. So we have been able to then target them more specifically to then the actual real special effects products. So in that way, we could have more of a direct kind of sale point of thing going on. But otherwise, yeah, no. I think, I think people just enjoyed us online and uh, then if they enjoy our company, then they would want to spend money with us, I'd say. So yeah. How important is sustainability to the business? So yeah, sustainability is quite a huge part for me personally. Um, I hate to see, especially in the cosmetics industry, there's so much plastic. And when I walk around in my shop, I have a hard time seeing everything wrapped in plastic, lots of hard plastics as well. So I've been trying to find ways to yeah, get rid of plastics as much as I can. So for all our, uh, all our stuff that we produce, I tend to put it either in very good recyclable plastic like PETs, um, or I put it in like recyclable um, cell biodegradable cellophanes. Um, it's all craft paper, you know, so I really tie up with everything that we make, we manufacture ourselves. We really kind of dwindle down on what we wrap our products in. Um, a couple of years ago, we decided to bring in a biodegradable glitter. So you can see all our glitters back there. Um, so yeah, a biodegradable glitter is a way better alternative than um, than the plastic glitters that are readily available everywhere. Um, so yeah, those, so we introduced that to New Zealand. So that's been quite a quite a thing that we're really proud of. Um, we got rid of all our other glitters that we used to have beforehand. So this is all we sell. Um, further, uh, we make sure we recycle all our packaging when we send out our products. Uh, we use compostable um, courier bags. Um, yeah, so everything that we can do, um, we will do. Um, 
Other thing I introduced is to actually have a, a repotting service uh, for face paints. So, um, so we actually sell face paint like raw, so, and then people can just buy it as a tiny little block of face paint. They could put it back into their container and just reuse the containers. So Yolanda, in the last 20 years of being in business, have there been any moments where you wish you'd actually done things quicker, take an opportunity sooner? Looking back, there's always so many things you kind of go, why didn't we do that then? Why didn't we jump in faster or sooner? Um, I think if we would have um, really tackled into our e-commerce earlier on, like instead of thinking like, oh yeah, that's kind of fun, you know, I really kind of jumped into it straight away. Um, you know, we could have been a lot bigger maybe already. Um, uh, jumping into TikTok when it came out, um, you know, so starting off with social media platforms, so you kind of go, eh, that's just for the kids, you know, it actually, it's actually not, it will trickle down to everybody. So, um, yeah, so jumping in things a little faster. Um, the other thing, I guess, for myself in a personal kind of viewpoint, um, kind of realizing our company is so much around our customers and they're the main focus. Um, of course, being an artist, you want to represent yourself uh, as well as most as well as you can. Um, so, by by putting all my amazing artwork out there, it might not always have translated as well to a customers if I would just put something very simple, kind of like. Um, kind of not necessarily dumbing down, but simplifying my artwork so it's more translatable for our customers so they can go like, oh, I can do this and therefore I'm going to buy the product so I can do it instead of trying to impress them with my big ego about how awesome my artwork is. So going forward, what's the next step for the business? So the next steps will be um, where we're going to be putting our workshops online. So we're having a subscription service for our face painting. Uh, not everybody can attend our real life workshops in either Auckland or Wellington. So people can learn from their own home with our products and our online courses. Um, we would like to offer this also at some point to Australia. So I'm very interested in looking at 3PL kind of companies and seeing if we can make that happen. Um, and then further, we're going to be trying our hardest to make this medical side of the business really boom and make that into a multi-million dollar company. So um, within a couple of years.